What's up? What's up, everybody? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome you guys here with us for our online Bible study. Hey, come on, go ahead and relax, get your dreams, get your stuff together, set your watch parties, click your shares, your likes. I want us to be interactive tonight. Um, we're going to have a good time in the Word of God. So all of our first timers, we want to just welcome you. We say thank you for showing up tonight, for tuning in to this online broadcast. Uh, we do believe that there will be something that will be shared that will be a blessing to your life. So for all of our first timers, on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we want to say welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. Let's jump on into this. Let's have a word of prayer, and we're going to get into this word tonight. Father, we just thank you. For this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords and think to my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you for every ear being anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We do bless you. We thank you for it now. Thank you for signs and wonders and miracles that follow the preached word of God. And we bless you and we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for it now in the name of Jesus. And we do cover the gifts of the Spirit to be an operation and demonstration. Fill us up, O oh God. We thank you for a fresh refilling of the Holy Spirit to abide and live and dwell in us, to strengthen us right now. Thank you that he quickens our mortal bodies and makes them alive. And so we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. And in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, y'all. Um, we are going to deal with something tonight. Um, I was kind of debating whether I was going to start off a, a new series tonight. I, I'm going to kind of kind of work some things out here tonight in our online Bible study. And I want to. I got a couple of things that's on my heart that I want to deal with and I want to share. Um just as a pastor, as a ministry gift, as a leader, um, I realize the impact that my voice can have in people's lives and that my voice has in the earth, in the body of Christ. God has called me to go teach his people who they are. So that's my niche. That's my thing. Um, I can teach you on many things, but when it comes to knowing who you are in Christ, knowing how to release the authority that God has given and granted unto you. That is my thing, knowing that you're the righteousness of God, knowing that you're already in right standing with God, knowing this power that dwells and abides on the inside of you and on the inside of us to change and to rearrange things around us. You know, no matter what, I come back to that. My, my ministry to the body as a whole is that that's my assignment. And I know that, and I'm comfortable in that. Um, as I deal with people, as I deal with situations on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, I've been in ministry for over 23 years now. Um, and um, been in pastoral ministry going on 15 years now. And it's just amazing. Um, God is sharing with me more and more. He's saying, I need you to hone in on some things. And not only, and I tell people, um, the best thing that I can be to them is an example. So that means I need to make sure that the word is working in me, that I don't preach something to you that I don't do myself. And so it's always important for us to gauge how we take the word because the word will not work until you work the word. The God's word, it, I mean, it's incorruptible seed. The Bible calls it incorruptible seed. It means it will always produce. But in the book of Mark, chapter four, it talks about four different types of ground, which represent the heart of a man, the spirit of a man. And when that word is sown in your heart, depending upon the ground will determine how that word produces. You talk about the stony ground, the thorny ground. Now, I wasn't going to even go here with that, but since I'm here, I'm gonna, let me start there in Mark, chapter four. And this is just so important. Um, I remember years ago, God gave me this message dealing with the mystery of the kingdom of God. I was in my bedroom. And as I just began, I would just have some time in the morning. And as I began to just sit and pray, and this was out of my devotion time. 
the Holy Spirit took me to the book of Mark chapter four and I started reading this and I actually turned it into my first book um, that I'm going to do a re-release. I'm going to redo it completely um, and probably end up giving it another title and everything. But this is so crucial. Um, Jesus said it like this and he began to teach verse one, Mark chapter four, verse one. And it says, and he began to teach. Somebody type that in the comment section for me. Um, Mark chapter four, and I'm going to start reading verse one. And he began uh, again to teach by the seaside and there was gathered unto him a great multitude so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things. This is talking about Jesus. He taught them many things by parables and said unto them uh, in his doctrine. Now you got to understand a parable really is, is really, if I, if I can really just, just boil it down to what is this happening here, Jesus is teaching spiritual principles in a practical way so that the people can grasp what he's saying. He uses a natural term to promote a spiritual thing. And so really he's doing it for those that are unlearned, don't know anything about how the kingdom of God works, how it functions, how it flows. But he begins to teach here. He says, hearken, that means hear with an intent to do. Hearken, that means hear with an intent to do. So nobody should be watching this broadcast if you don't intend to do what you hear. It's important, you're listening to hear something. But you're listening to hear something so that you can apply it. So he says, he hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. So to get the image here. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increase and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some a hundred. And he said unto them, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. So if you have ears to hear, you got to hear this. Sometimes people hear with their physical ear, but don't hear with that inward ear. What is God saying? So you need to sit and hear, listen to what's being said. Listen to what God is trying to get across to you. Jesus, and let me go back up. Now look at these four different types of situations. He said that some fell, um, this seed that was, a sword went out to sow. And he says, as he sowed, now it doesn't say what he's sowing, but we understand the, um, a farmer and how a farmer sows. A farmer sows seed, what's called seed, okay? The seed by definition, it comes from the Greek word sperma where we get our word sperm from. And the definition of it is, it's the beginning of all things, but with the fruit of the harvest already in it. So in other words, when you sow the seed, really you're sowing the harvest. Seed is just harvest in beginning form or stage, but it's still your harvest, but it's tied and wrapped in seed, okay? I want you to keep that in mind. He says, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Okay, so now this seed, birds are coming and eating the seed before it really takes root in the ground. So it never even gets a chance to start growing. That's important. Then he said, and some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. So there was no depth to the earth. And immediately it sprang up. Why? Because it had no depth. So if you know anything about seed, the roots grow down, then the, the stalk, the harvest springs up. But if there's not much depth, you see an immediate springing forth, but then the problem is there is no depth to the thing that's being sown. So it really does not take really good root in the ground. So just, just hear me when I'm saying this. And it sprang up, immediately it sprang up because it had uh, no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. Why? And because it had no root, 
it withered away. The sun, when the heat was turned up on the thing, because the seed really didn't develop root, it was easily scorched because the, the harvest or the plant or whatever is being sown, it feeds off the soil that it's sown into and it, the nutrients, the water, all of the nourishment comes through the root, which springs up. And so because it wasn't really rooted in the ground, when the heat was turned up, when the heat in life is turned up, I know you know where I'm going with this, that now because it really wasn't in the ground, it really wasn't in the heart, that now when the stuff turned up, it just scorched away. All right, we're going we're gonna to get to that in just a second. And then some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Oh, I want a good, oh Lord, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the one there. It's not that the, the seed isn't growing or the harvest isn't growing. It's also that something else is there in the ground that's growing up with it. But the thing of the thorny ground is it starts to choke. In other words, the negative, the bad thing starts choking up the good thing that you want to produce. So sometimes you realize, now watch this. If it's growing up, if the th thorns are growing up, that means it was there in a form in seed form, some way, shape, fashion, or form, in order for it to grow up, it had to be planted. So something else was there that was planted that choked up the other seed that the sower sowed. Now I want to throw this out there. If the sower knew that the thorns were there, they could have possibly uprooted it under from under the ground so that it wouldn't grow up with the harvest as well of what they were trying to sow. I, I, I'll get to that in a second. Now watch this. And then other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. And he said unto them, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him uh, with the 12 asked of him the parable. And watch what Jesus said. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand, least at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven. And so now he says, I'm teaching these people these things and these parables. Really the bottom line is I want them to change their direction. I want them to change their heart. I want them to get born again. I want them to come into the newness of life. I want them to understand how we function on this side so that now they can come on over to where we are. And he said unto them, verse 13, Know ye not this parable? Now watch this. This is an extremely important thing. Mark it in your Bibles, highlight it, write it down. You got to remember this. He said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? He says, if you don't get this parable, you won't get any other parable. This is the parable among parables. This is Jesus himself saying it. So if Jesus is saying this, it is extremely important that we get this. You got to hear me, folks. You have to hear me. This is extremely important. I'm going to preach this like I've never preached it before. But I need you to hear it almost like you've never heard it before. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now watch this. The sower soweth the word. So he calls the word the seed. That's the seed that we're talking about. So you got to see now the sower sow of the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Satan comes immediately. Now watch this. Um, if you look at it here, they call this the wayside. This is the wayside ground. This is the, where the word is sown. This is where a preacher has been preaching to you. You've been hearing stuff online. You done gone to this one, to this site, to this page. You done heard this word. You done heard that word. You have heard the word of God. And it has been sown in your heart. But watch this. If your ground, if your heart is considered the wayside ground, Satan comes immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now, let's stop here. If just looking at this at face value, it seems as though that Satan can come at any time and snatch out the word that's in your heart. 
It, it says nothing about him not being able to do it. It just says that Satan cometh immediately. So this is why now we got to understand in what's called the synoptic gospels. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, some people throw John up in there. And so right now what it does is, is three different viewpoints of the same account. If you go to Matthew's account of this, the word of God says it like this, that when the, in, when the word is sown and a person understands it not, then cometh the wicked one. Then cometh the wicked one to steal the word that was sown. So in other words, if you don't understand what's being said, it's easier for the enemy to come in to rob you of that word that's being sown in your heart. But once you understand it, you got it. Okay? So it's important to understand the word of God when you hear it. It's important to understand because if you're in all that getting, get understanding. This is why it's so crucial for you to hear the word in a way that you can grasp it, that you can understand it, that you can apply it. Because if you don't understand the thing, Satan can come and rob you of that word that was just deposited in your heart. Somebody can come and tell you the answer to your dilemma, but if you don't understand what's being said and you don't get it, that Satan can come in as your enemy to snatch it so it will never come to pass. What happens to a seed that you rip out of the ground, it will never grow. And sometimes you can be talking to people that you talk to and talk to, but they haven't gotten it. And you're trying to figure that out. Sometimes you're trying to figure out, God, why don't I get this yet? You got to understand it and really grasp it. This is why Jesus started off. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So pray, begin to pray, God, open the eyes of my understanding so that I can comprehend your truth, comprehend your word. So this is what Paul prayed to in the book of Ephesians chapter one, verses 16 through 23. He first starts off, I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you is granted unto them, that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened. So God wants our eyes to be open and our ears to hear. Now watch this. And he said, these are they which are sown on stony ground who, when they have heard the word, they immediately receive it with gladness. I think that's the majority of a lot of people. That's the church. That boy, we get to shouting, we get to running, we get to praising, because we immediately receive the word. We believe it and we immediately receive it, but watch what begins to happen. And watch this, and have no root in themselves. And so, watch this, endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises, watch this, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended, offended. You see, when you get offended, it's hard to hear. It's hard to receive. This is why it's so important that you got to deal with your heart. You got to deal with things that you're going through. You can't be offended at the person that's trying to share with you because you'll never hear them. And see, that's what Satan would try to do. He would try to come in and bring in strife into people's lives so that he can mess up relationships so that now you won't receive the benefit of it. Now, I got to go. I got to work this because I believe this is where God's saying a lot of the body of Christ is. A lot of people are at this stage in their life. He says here, you received it with gladness when you first heard it. But watch this. Let's break this down and have no root in themselves. So the question comes up now, how do I develop root in the word? How do I develop this? One of the ways you develop root in the word is you got to go over it. You have to meditate on it. You have to ponder it, listen to it over and over again. You got to speak it. You have to now apply it. See, when you begin to apply it, it becomes stronger in you. This is how you develop root in yourself. You hear it over and over again. You speak it over and over again. You submit to it. Listen, you got to submit to the word of God. You got to do what you're being taught so that you can grow in it. Amen. Now watch this. You got to do this. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Sometimes I, I do get it. I understand why. Sometimes, you know, we say with people, I just don't get it. I don't understand why you just still. The reason, I know why. The word tells us why. The reason why it doesn't stick because you haven't developed root in it. I can't tell you the number of times I've heard messages. 
over and over and over again. I preached it over and over and over again. Why? It helps to develop root. It helps to get it in you so that now when stuff, when persecution arises for the word's sake, when persecution arises for the word's sake, look what the persecution comes for. The persecution ain't coming for you. It's coming for the word. Because Satan knows if I can get that word out of you, it'll never grow. You'll never see it produce. Then you'll start doubting whether the word is true. You'll start doubting, will it work for me? Because it ain't worked yet. And the reason why it hadn't worked yet is because you didn't let it grow root in you. And the reason why you didn't let it grow root in you is because you refused to say it. You kept talking the problem instead of the answer. You kept negatively meditating on what the bad outcome was going to be versus saying, okay, what God's word says about the situation. Worry is just negative meditation versus you meditating on the, the promise, which builds your faith in that area. That's what happens when people faint in the day of adversity. Scripture says it's because their strength was small. Your spiritual strength was low. That's why you couldn't handle the fight. That's why you easily buckle under pressure because your strength is small and your strength is small because you're not hearing, applying and doing what the word is saying. The way you train your spirit is you immediately you got to meditate on the word of God. You got to ponder it. You got to roll it in your head. You got to keep it before your mind. Then you got to learn how to instantly obey the voice of your spirit. Instantly obey when the word tells you to do something. Instantly obey it. No, I tried that. It ain't work. No, no, you didn't. You tried it. You didn't decide to do it. You were trying to see if, okay, let me, I'll do it one time to see if it worked. Wait a minute. No, you got to make a decision. No, this is how I live as a Christian. That's why it hasn't grown root. And so many times, People who've been saved for years, years, I'm telling you, still function as a babe in Christ because they allow their carnal nature to run them and to rule them. What does God's word say? He says, I like afterwards when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, for the word's sake, tribulation come up for the word's sake. People persecuting you for the word's sake. Immediately, you get offended. How easy do you get offended? That shows how weak you are spiritually. Oh, I hate to say it like that. No, I hate to say it like that. I'm saying it like that. God says it. You're easily offended because the word is not rooted in your heart. You're not rooted in love. You're not rooted in long suffering, gentleness, and patience. I understand this. I'm not just saying, I'm saying this for myself. There are things, if I see that I'm easily offended in an area, I got to stop and say, I'm not rooted in that area. I need to grow. I got to grow. And we can't allow our flesh to rule any longer. The flesh is a carnal mind that goes against the word of God. God tells you to do one thing, and you make a decision, you're going to do the opposite because you just don't want to do it. God says, I need you to grow up now. I want you to grow in this thing. This is in any area, folks. We got we to gotta take note of this. And he says, watch this. He says, they endure for a time, but now there's no longevity to it. So now they're immediately offended. You know, that's what killed John the Baptist. He got offended because Jesus wouldn't visit him in prison. This was the same dude that saw him. The same dude. The same dude that leaped in his mother's belly before Jesus was even born. When Elizabeth and Mary met each other. And they leaped. John leaped in her womb. Same dude. Who preached and said, behold the Lamb of God which come to take away the sins of the world. The same guy. Who baptized Jesus in the river Jordan and saw the heavens open up, and saw the Holy Spirit descend upon them like a dove, and heard the voice of God from heaven saying, this was a supernatural act. He was right there, he witnessed it. Behold, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. 
Then when he's in prison, he tells the disciples, go ask Jesus, is he the one? Or do we need to look for another? How did he get from preaching hard about Jesus, paving the way for him to come, seeing the supernatural acts take place, to questioning, is he the one? Because he was offended. Offense stepped in. He got unrooted in what in something he was once rooted in. Get it back in you. Come back home, the Lord says. Get serious about this thing again. Man, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I'm this thing. I'm, I'm hot with the enemy. Because when God said, teach my people who they are, this is part of it. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of God. God did not call you to lose. He called you to win. And he says, I'll always cause you to triumph in Christ Jesus. You are my ambassador. You are my representative. If your life is not what it's supposed to be, you are a bad representation of me. And he says this, I don't create junk. I don't make mistakes. And God made you with purpose in mind. And he's saying, it's time to rise to who you are. This goes into what I was originally going to teach tonight was the question was this, who are you? Scripture says in Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you think in your heart, so are you. As you think in your heart, so are you. As you think, as you think, as you think, how do you think about yourself? That's how you view yourself. That's how you begin to respond. As a man thinketh, so is he. So if you think you're a failure, you'll be one. If you think you're no good, you'll act no good. You'll submit to no good behaviors. You'll start talking no good because now wrong thinking equals wrong believing. Wrong believing equals wrong living. On the opposite, right thinking equals right believing. Right believing equals right living. As a man thinketh, who are you? Jesus asked his disciples, he says, who do men say that I am? That's interesting. Peter said, well, some think you this and some think you that. They think you're Elias so or Elijah come. Some think you're a good prophet. Some think you this. He says, who do you say that I am? That's interesting. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, flesh and blood ain't revealed that to you, but my father. Then he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Upon this revelation that you have of me will determine how you build. Why? Because we're in God's image after his likeness. Because we know who he is, we'll begin to know who we are because we are a part of him. Come on now. If you know who he is, scripture says, as he is, so are we in the earth. You are God's members in the earth. You are the body of Christ, the body of Christ. We are the body of the anointed one in his anointing. And we share in that anointing. We share in that authority. We are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. We are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, it says not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And God has placed all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And us hath he quickened and made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. He's made us alive. We're seated with Christ. And so because Satan is under his feet, Satan is under our feet. Who are you? you believe this day who you are and so because we know who we are we function from a place of authority glory to God see listen you're not fighting for victory you're fighting from victory you got to get that I'm trying to get free the Bible says whom the son has set free is free indeed you already free now you just got to believe it you got to declare it. You got to cast down those imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. 
And the Bible says you revenge your disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So if you have not been believing right about yourself and talking right about yourself, he says revenge that disobedience by now speaking well about yourself, by thinking well about yourself, by acting better because you are the righteousness of God. You are holy, God says, because I am holy. Come on now, y'all, come on. He says, rise up. He said, get on up, rise, arise and shine. Come on out your pity party, rise and shine. Oh, ooh, I hate the enemy. Shukumbre. Whoo, glory to God. Something in me rises strong. I sense the power of God. Whenever I sense a bully, boy, when I sense Satan working on folk, something angers, I, there's righteous indignation that rises up in me. The anointing activates on me to attack that thing. Because it's Satan trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I am come. Somebody watching me that's dealing with this thing, it's heavy. Because I sense the, the weight of power that's flowing out of me now. And it's to deal strong with that thing that's been oppressing you. See, a, a believer cannot be, cannot be possessed by the devil because God dwells in your spirit. So he can't come and dwell where God is, but he can heavily oppress you. That means strong pressure applied to your mental faculties, thoughts that come, defeated thoughts, fearful thoughts, things that come to you to make you think that you are not who you are. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And then Satan comes and say, you ain't nothing but trash. Don't nobody want you. Don't nobody love you. That's the enemy trying to steal, kill, and destroy the identity of you as a believer. God says this, I love you with an everlasting love. Jesus died for you and was raised from the dead for you and had enough gall to say, come on up here with me and sit with me in heavenly places. Glory. Man, I'm about ready to take off right now. Boy, you better hear me. I'm telling you, I sense... When this anointing comes on me, I sense it's like if I'm in any small space, I feel I feel the anointing of expansion. It's like the power is who if I can explain it. You can't think low. You can't think small. You can't think defeated and you hate the scent of defeat. Anything around you that smells like it, that you cower from the devil. It's like, no, come on, find your authority. Understand who you are. Open up your mouth and declare what well, I don't feel like it. Well, start speaking and it'll start changing how you feel. You got to fight through the emotions. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to have strong pressure to the point where it feel like your body is triggering and things are happening in your flesh because now strong stress, we call it stress. Cause you so busy thinking about all of this stuff and don't realize God is your abundant compensation. God is your supply. God is your source. God is a very present help in time of trouble and need. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain. I love it that he called it the throne of grace to give you something you don't deserve. Glory to God, because Jesus already paid for it. you come. You may not deserve to be forgiven, but God is already forgiven of your sins, past, present and future. Glory to God. Glory to God. Whoa, I done run out, man, I done dropped my mic. I'm telling you, glory to God. I'm telling you, God is a good God. 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 I can't do nothing but praise him when I get stirred up. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all, hey, she's going to get me preaching here because I'm telling you, God is a good God. God is a good God and he wants to do good to you. He wants to make you happy. He wants to give you your dreams. He wants you to live lavish. He wants you to be delivered. He wants you to be set free. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to rejoice. He wants you to rejoice. Glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, God Almighty. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Some of you sensing this thing with me. Go on and praise him too. It's all right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Mm. God is a good God. Come on, come on. Whoo, Lord, I tell you. Yeah, the sower sow of the word. But God said there is a place where you can sow the word and it'll bring forth fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. Where you begin to sow the word and you begin to see. This is what the word of the Lord is saying unto me that March of 2021 is your pivot month. That there is going to be a pivot. There is a turning point that he, I believe that he dropped in my heart this past week that he said that this is a pivotal month, that this is a month of pivot. To pivot means to turn. It's a turning point. And sometimes what happens is in a pivotal moment, it could be a good moment or it can even be a bad or a tragic moment, but it's a moment that something turns in your life. It's a moment that something changes. And God says how you deal with it will determine the outcome. If it's a negative experience, if you begin to arise and shine and begin to say, you know what, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. This thing, this too shall pass. Whatever we decree shall be established and it's going to turn around for our favor. It's going to turn around for our good and we're going to see the glory of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. This your pivot. You changing. You changing for the better. I prophesy the word of God over you. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, that means to be adaptable, to adjust. The Lord says, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Build up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You build up yourself. He calls it most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. What is that? Praying in other tongues. Le cumbre fra se te corre mal le breche te canda. Ni cumbre fe te se te cumbre fra na 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 bre. This is about God. You between you and God. You build up yourself. You edify yourself. You charge yourself up. And the Bible says this. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Listen, you don't need no wine to de-stress. That's why he says don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the spirit some of you going to wine when you got to go to the holy ghost you are you listen all you're doing is you're trying to take a natural substance to fulfill a spiritual need and god is giving you that's why he said drink the new wine talking about the holy spirit i'm telling you the power is there and it's present to heal set free and deliver but if you don't partake of him if you don't learn how to drink if you don't learn how to get in the presence of god and now understand that he is your supply he is your sufficiency you don't need anything else but him he is more jesus is enough he is more than enough but you got to come into his presence you got to abide in him and listen i can tell i can tell when people ain't been in the presence of god the glow leaves them God wants you full of him, full of his glory, full of his grace, full of his mercy, full of his kindness. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. I ain't holding back nothing no more. I'm preaching the word of God. I'm going to preach the hell out of you. I'm going to preach everything that ain't of God, that it got to be removed in the name of Jesus. The power of the word of the Lord, the spirit of God is upon me. For he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And it is time. Arise, church. Arise, Zion. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I prophesy over you now breakthrough right now. I prophesy breakthrough moments. Some stuff right now, you need the power of God to show up. You done talked enough. You done counseled enough. You done tried to go to this person and that person, this guru, that guru. But you ain't going to the guru, the Holy Ghost, who's been there the whole time, ready to give you peace, ready to bring you out of that thing. And I'm telling you, this is your year, glory to God. This is your year. You better receive it. You better receive it. Get the offense out your mind. Get it out your heart right now and receive the word of the Lord and grow thereby now. The deep calleth upon the deep. Come on out. Come out from among them. Come on now. You need to be around people with your answer, not with people with your problem. Oh, oh yeah, I'm hot with the enemy. You need to arise as to who you are. Come on. It's time. 
Yeah, some be like, Lord, what done got in the past? What, what, he, you know what? God says enough is enough. You've heard these words. You've heard these words. Yeah, you've heard these words from my prophet, saith the Lord. And now it's time for you to adhere to what you've heard, for you will be held accountable for the words that you have heard, but not yet lived. For I will come and visit your house, say of the Lord, and judgment begins in the house of God. God is sweeping, and there are things that you're going to begin to remove, that God is going to begin to deal with many people, things in your lives that have hindered him from moving forward and hindered you from moving forward, hindered him from doing some things, but hindered you from moving forward. And he says, I'm going to remove every blockage. And it's getting ready to hit strong. You hear me? Some of you, you're going to manage finances better than you ever have in your life. God is saying, I need you to come into a discipline like you have never come into before. And you need to lock into the promise like you've never locked in before. God saying, I'm calling you to great focus now. I'm calling you to lock in on things and accomplishment after accomplishment. Yeah, here a little, there a little, expedite, speed, home speed up, growth, expansion, increase in Jesus' name, in every area. I command, yeah. I can say, yep, you lay hands on the sick and they recover in Jesus' name. I command in the name of Jesus, great recovery, great, great recovery in the body of Christ, great recovery in your lives, great recovery, great recovery. And I declare restoration of all. Amen. Restoration of all. If you believe something about yourself, you become what you believe. And what you begin to speak out of a believing heart will alter you to begin to form and morph into what you've been saying and believing. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, you begin to alter. Don't forget. The molecules, the atoms, align themselves with the word of the Father. And when you speak, the atmosphere is shifted. Matter is shifted. Molecules are shifted, created, reassigned, reformed. And God, I'm telling you, you will begin to alter even your genetic makeup at times. Because it's obeying the word of God and you will even feel like what you speaking. Whatever it is. Oh, I done, I done, I'm, 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 I'm tapping into something, y'all. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm bringing you out of your pit because I'm bringing your mind out. You coming out head first this year. Now, head first, head first. Your spirit is already there. Your head got to catch up to where you already are spiritually. That's all. You coming out head first, head first, head first. Hallelujah. I got, I, I'm going to stop here. Head first. Man, I ain't realize I've been preaching that long. Head first. Head first. Glory to God. God is good. Speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. What's a psalm, a hymn, a spiritual song? Make your melody in your heart to the Lord. Begin to sing unto the Lord. He'll begin to refresh you. I remember I was singing. I sang it before. I don't know if I did it, but it was years ago. I, I just began to sing this song as I was feeling depression and, and just the fear and the worry and the anxiety and the stress of things, the financial pressure and all of that stuff. And 
All I just began to sing was, and I heard the spirit of the Lord said, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. As you, some of y'all don't realize the power of praise. I was teaching in a, in a discipleship class just the other night that when we praise God, the power of God is loosed. Glory to God. Oh, and at midnight, who Acts 16, 25, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly the print, ooh, the foundation of the prison doors was shaken and everyone's bands were loosed. Not only were they set free, but everybody in their vicinity of their praise was set free. Come on, man. Come on, woman. Praise God for your family. Praise him in your situation. That God is the God of a turnaround. And he said, and the prisoners heard him. And the prisoners heard him. It wasn't the prisoners' faith that got them free. It was Paul and Silas's faith and praise that got them free. Listen, because, man, can you understand the power of this? I know, I know it was the physical prison, but you got to take this even from the literal and also the figurative of this thing, that God wants to show you something, that there is power in praise and power is manifested when you begin to praise God and it can cause the oppressed to go free. Sometimes you're the only one left to fight for your family. You better fight with everything that's in you. You got the greater one who's greater than anything that's come against you in your family. For greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. First John four and four. So you better understand your body is the temple of the living God, which God has said, I will dwell in you and walk in you. I'll be your God. You shall be my people. I declare and decree in the name of the Lord Jesus that this is your turnaround season, that everything that you set your hands to will prosper, flourish, and work, that God is already restoring some things. He is changing and rearranging some things. Stop. Remember, if the, per the, the word is sown and the person understands it not, then cometh the wicked one. Or if you receive it with gladness, make sure you get root of this and you go back and listen to this broadcast over and over and over and over again. You put pick up your Bible. Some of you don't even pick up your Bible and read it. It's a shame. And you got to pick up the word of God, read the word. of God. I'm not trying to bring you under condemnation when I say it like that, but you got to, you, you got to, he said, keep it before your eyes, keep it on your mouth, keep it in your heart for it's life to those that find them and help to all your flesh. It, listen, Man should not live by bread alone, does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's your life. It's your life. It's your life. Great peace. Great peace. Some of y'all need to rest well. Some of you sense the pressure off now that was on you, and that's why your body feeling the way it's feeling. Something is happening right now. The anointing is attacking that thing that's been pressuring you and stressing you out. And what happens is when that thing releases your body from can't understand the physical stress has been under. And when the pressure is released, you're ready to rest. I declare that tonight will be your greatest rest night. Go ahead and receive it. That you're going to sleep well tonight. Eat well and rest well. Eat nutrition. Put fuel in your body. Some of you need to fuel your body. Somebody might be crying right now. Somebody you feel the power of God. And you need to, I feel like, like when the young girl was brought up from, the, um, from her deathbed, when Jesus said, give us something to eat, because she just went through this moment and her, her body needed to be nourished. Because she was just delivered and set free. Because when the super comes upon the natural, something gives. And then your body is affected. And when that anointing begins to lift, you need replenishment. I don't know who I'm talking to. I just felt like I just needed to say that. Flush out your body from toxins. Drink water, plenty of water. Flush out the toxins in your body. I, that just popped up. That's for somebody, whoever needs to obey that. Flush it out. You're going to rest well. Flush it out. Flush it out. And I'm, I'm not, I got to give you this instruction. I'm not being vulgar or anything like that. 
but you keep drinking and flushing until your urine goes from dark to clear. And I hear that for somebody. You keep flushing because you're flushing stuff out. When it starts coming out clear, it's like, okay, I don't know who that's for. Something's coming up. Wisdom is coming up for somebody right now. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. All right, I'm stop. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you want to connect with this ministry, you want to become a partner, a member of this work, reach out. God is doing something tremendous. He's working on your heart. God is raising you up. He wants you to be fed the word of God. Some of you already have a church home, and that's fine. But for those that are out there that don't, it's like, man, I'm looking for a place to connect, connect to. I recommend this ministry to you right now. Come on, check us out. Stay with us. Come back. Listen to the messages. Get the word in you. Apply what you're learning. And see if the word won't work when you apply it. God is a good God. So you can go to our website, get more information. Go to spiritoffire.us. Connect with us. If you want to get born again, you can reach out to us and we can minister to you as to how to obtain and maintain. But I just feel like tonight I just need to just, just, just share this word with you. At this time, if you want to sow, go ahead and give as God is leading you to give. I think it's important to understand this word. Freely you receive, freely give. Give according to what you receive tonight. As God lays it on your heart. Listen, somebody like, all I got is $5. Hey, that man, that, that's a huge seed for God because it's all you have. And some of you may say, you know what? Okay, if you just only hard to do a dollar of the five or two dollars, whatever God is telling you, God might be telling you to do something. Do what he's telling you to do. Because on the other end of your obedience is a breakthrough, is a harvest that God has in mind for the seed he's telling you to sow. And as you do it, do it with expectation. I expect to receive my harvest in Jesus' name. Praise God. All right, y'all. That's it for tonight. It's, it, we got the stuff coming up, I believe. You can How you can sow, how you can give. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Man, I don't know about y'all. I got blessed tonight. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Now, may the grace and peace of God be upon you. May God's presence rest heavy upon you. Grace, grace be upon you. Yeah, on behalf of the God, yeah, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. On behalf of the Lord Jesus, by the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may everything work well and in your favor. May all things work together for your good. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. With long life you're satisfied with. I feel, I don't know if this is what this, the Spirit of God, I sense it's, a, it's in the back of the neck. It's, it's, somebody's dealing with tension. I declare it removed now in Jesus' name. I declare it removed now. I declare back spasms to go. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Yeah, you don't need to take the muscle relaxer. The spirit of God is coming upon your physical body. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Whoever needs to receive that. In Jesus' name. Peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, y'all, love you guys. Appreciate you. Yeah, I'm drunk in the Holy Ghost now. I'm, 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 I'm good. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, love you guys. This is Pastor Mike here with Spirit of Fire, where we're changing the culture, igniting the passion, and living the dream. God bless you all. Love you. See you next time. Peace.